Chapter 25, Pawn and Bishop Disclaimer, Itsuki will not be a pervert. Instead, I will make her an outgoing fun person. Kaneko will be his first rook and either Kuroka or Lavinia for his second bishop. Ramonis did not have to wait long for Itsuki to come out of her room with a small suitcase. He did wonder why she was not afraid as he dangled her in the air. In her mind, now that she was on the ground it was more fun than scary. She even wondered if she too could get some wings like Ramonis one day. Flying after all was one of the dreams most children thought about. When she came out of her room, she looked rather excited to travel. Plus, she would be getting out of school so that was a win in her opinion. I am ready. Once she had ready, her parents who were still affected by just a slight amount of his spell focused on her. Gora patted her head and wished her luck. Make sure to listen to Ramonis, okay? Itsuki nodded with a smile. Yes, Dad. Mickey hugged her tight and kissed her cheek. Even if it is only two weeks, take care and make sure to behave. Watching the sight made him smile. Magic could be used for good or evil and if he was honest, Rias in the anime had brainwashed them way worse than he did and Issei did not care. At least he only affected them a tiny bit to make them listen to him without freaking out. I am not a bad person. Keep telling myself that long enough and I will start believing it. Once they said their goodbyes, Ramona stood up and walked over to the girl. He placed his hand on her shoulder. Ready to go? She looked up at him and nodded. Yes, sir. He opened a teleport circle under them and turned to Garu and Mickey. As I said, you will get daily reports on her progress, and in two weeks she will be returned to you. While she is training with me, a servant of my clan shall talk to you to rehome you or renovate your home. Gora nodded. I will trust you. Take care of my daughter. Mickey hugged her husband's arm in sadness. Yes, stay strong, Itsuki. Itsuki waved them goodbye as Ramonas teleported back to his room. When they arrived, Itsuki instantly started to look in every direction. Well, your room is ten times bigger than mine. It's almost as big as my house. He smiled as he ruffled her hair a little. I am rich and an aristocrat. If this surprises you, just wait until you see the bathroom. Give me a second. He walked over to the bed where Akino had landed perfectly on the pillow. She was exhausted from her year and a half on the run, so even if he did put her to sleep, she was recovering nicely. He placed a hand on her head and removed his spell allowing her to wake up. Itsuki was curious about her and set down her suitcase to walk over. Your sister? He shook his head. No. She is someone like you. Except she is half-fallen angel. I talked about them a little with your parents. Itsuki started to think back to his lecture while Akino opened her eyes. Still a little groggy she grabbed his arm. Father. He smiled as he ran a hand down her silky black hair. No, it's me Ramonas. You're safe now where no one will hunt you and no one will hurt you ever again. Akino sat up and rubbed her eyes. Really? I am safe. He sat down next to her and held her hand. He gave her hand a firm, but gentle hold. Yes, I know you may have been raised with fear for devils, but I hold no hate for your people. Fallens, devils, and angels are all part of the same pantheon. We all deserve to live happy lives regardless of who we are. Akino nodded as she finished waking up. She lowered her head a little to him in thanks. Thank you for saving me. I would be dead without you. He stood up and started to talk to her about her situation. Of course. While I have you here, I need to tell you this. Azazel spoke to me when you passed out. He told me that your father this whole time was protecting you from the shadows. He is the reason you survived this long on your own. Akino froze on the spot as she mumbled a few words. He did. Ramonas wrapped her in a hug which made her think back to the time before her mother's death. Her father had strong and kind arms just like this. He loves you, Akino. I know you feel he is to blame for your mother's passing, but there is so much more than you realize. You do not need to forgive him now or ever, but as long as you hold hatred for him, you will never know peace. Akino barely knew him, but already she felt he truly cared. She hugged him back as this was the first kindness she had felt since her mother died. Thank you, Ramonis. I am in your debt. He held her a little longer before he let go of her. He smiled as he gave her a piece of advice. You have a long time to understand that. For now, I want to introduce you to someone. It's Suki. The small brown-haired girl walked over to Akino and leaned in to look at her face. Your hair is so pretty like a Japanese girl. Your eyes are like stars, different than the demon man. He snorted as she kept calling him that. I already said my name is Ramonis and I am not a man. I am eleven. Akino looked up at him in shock. Really? You are the same age as me? Ramonis sighed as his rapid growth came with downsides when it came to those his age. Yes, I am. 
All my training has caused my bloodline to grow, and with it, I grew quicker. And we demons, as you keep calling me, can change our appearance slightly. See? With a slight infusion of demonic energy, he made his mature face begin to take more kid-like features. It was not easy anymore as he had kept this look for a while. Still, both Itsuki and Akino watched in surprise as his grown-up face began to look more kid-like. Itsuki reached out and began to touch his face a little. Wow, it's real. Akino began to do the same, and she even pulled on his cheeks a little. How does it work? Kids. He gently removed their hands from his face and returned his face to his perfect mature features. This way people took him more seriously than if he kept his face at what it should look like. Most devils always choose to look younger as his mother made herself look to be in her early 20s. Miria kept her look to be in her late 20s while Sarah Fall kept herself looking like a teenage short stack. He loved all three as neither made a wrong choice in his opinion. Regardless, once they stopped pulling at his face tried to explain it a bit. It is a racial ability of devils. We can alter our appearances somewhat. Anyway, while you two are focused time for a slight history lesson of House Grimmery. It is one of the highest standing devil clans of the remaining 32 clans at the rank of Duke. I am the next heir, and I am gathering a peerage of mighty individuals. I want you two to join it, which means the next Lord of House Grimmery will be your backer. Ask any questions you have. Akino asked something. My father spoke of peerages. He said that devils can turn others into devils, but I am part fallen. How will that work? He began to explain the power of the evil peace system to them. Reincarnated devils keep all their original race's powers. This means you would gain devil powers and keep your original fallen angel once. I am sorry to say that even if you reincarnate into a devil you will always be a fallen angel. And suppressing that side of yourself will make your power stagnate and hurt you. As for you Itsuki, joining my peerage will fix some of your weaknesses as a human. For one you will be stronger, faster, and more resilient, and you will never die old. It will also make you able to control the boosted gear better with more energy. You can decide now, or in two weeks. Akino, you have longer as you will be in my care. Yes. Akino thought about it for a few moments before she asked the question. Will you turn me now? Ramonas could see merit in turning her now, or later. If he waited, he could let her gain more purity in her fallen angel bloodline, or turn her into reincarnated devil to train both sides of her. Depends on what you want. Also, you need a bath food, and rest, Itsuki, you need better control over your sacred gear, and we have two weeks for it. You can choose to not join, or join now. Whatever you decide. Ramonis knew asking Itsuki a nine-year-old was manipulation. Kids were easy to manipulate even if he had her best intentions at heart. They were simple like that as all he told her were good things. The bad thing was the weakness of holy water, light, and crosses. But he had a training method to remove that weakness from them until he had Valerie at his side. I want to join now. I want to be stronger for my parents. Ramona smiled as he stood up and brought out his eight pawn pieces. Already thanks to his cambian soul, they had a slight purple glow mixed in with the red. He wondered what unique effects they had now that they were warped by his soul. He knew the moment she joined his peerage her fate would be tied to him, and so would her soul. He would always be her master, but he was not going to treat his peerage as slaves. He was still a grimmery even though he was a slight outsider than his family. He just had one worry. Please tell me it won't take that many. Okay then. Let's try with one. He moved one toward her, but it failed. He watched as it spun around her making her follow it with her eyes. Did it work? No, it needs more. He added another which still did not work. He added one more, but he still felt resistance. It was only when he added the fourth one that all four evil pieces entered her chest and activated the transformation. Instantly her mana began to be converted into demonic energy, and from her back emerged two sets of dragonified demon wings. A little like his own. Seeing that made him extremely proud of himself as he reincarnated the red dragon empress with just four pieces, unlike Rias. Yes. For is a perfect price for the red dragon empress. Isn't that what Sona used for Saji? Shows just how powerful I am, of course. When the transformation was over, Itsuki turned around and looked at her wings. Cool. Can I fly now? He nodded as her wings were retracted into her back. You can, but not inside. We have two weeks to get you to have control over your powers, including your wings. Seeing how Itsuki was fine and did not change, Akino raised her hand. I will do it. I will join your peerage. I want to be strong to never lose anyone like mother again. To give her more hope, he gave her something extra like a motivator. All right, just so you know, while your mother's body died, her soul is alive. She either went to heaven or Yomi. 
With enough power, you can rescue her to bring her to life. Instantly, she became much more determined. I will join your peerage, Mr. Ramonis. I want to save my mom. He returned his three regular pawns and mutation pawn to his soul, where they were still being warped by his purple cambion soul. He pulled out his two bishops, which were also glowing a slight purple. All right, Akino, here goes. He sent one of them toward her, and thankfully that was all it took. Instantly, her transformation began. Just like Itsuki, her mana was warped into demonic energy, but when her wings emerged, she kept one fallen angel wing, and the other became demonic just like him. When her soul and magic settled down and she looked at her wings, she felt disgusted. Noticing her feelings, he extinguished them before they became a trauma. It would weaken her or form a heart devil as the cultivators called it. Do not feel disgusted. This is a gift to Kino. You are a very rare Nephilim now. Gifted with the powers of a fallen angel and a devil. As long as you use both, you will be one with the dark and light. As long as you put your trust in me, you will be among the strongest. Will you put your trust in me? She retracted her wings and nodded as she took his extended hand. I will. Good. I am already seeing great things in your future. As I said before we start anything at Kino, you should get some food and some rest. I will get the servants to prepare some rooms for you. This mansion is massive and so many rooms are just sitting empty. The rooms next to mine or in front of mine will be yours. First, you should meet my family since you are now in my peerage. Ramonis opened the door of his room and walked to where he knew his mother was. These days she was either in her office or taking it easy. As for Rias, she continued her training and compared to when she started she was growing incredibly. As they walked he began to give a slight explanation. This is the main mansion of the Grimry clan. Home to my family and several hundreds of servants. It's Itsuki you can think of this as a second home away from home and Akino this will be your new home. Itsuki frowned at hearing that. A little disappointed. Oh, I thought I could stay. He chuckled as he patted her head. Your parents will worry about you, silly girl. Though you will be coming here very often for training. I will begin to teach you what we devils do in the human world. Long ago we used to deal in human souls, but that rarely happens anymore. Itsuki tilted her head. Why? Simply put, devils used to be more evil before Lucifer died. Akino knew that as her father told her, but Itsuki as a regular human before this did not. He is dead. He nodded. Yup, my brother Serzex took over after his death. You are going to hear a lot of truths by being around me this whole time. Any more things you want to know? Itsuki thought about it and asked something. You said the boosted gear is the fifth Longinus. What's the sixth? He grinned as he turned to face her. The divine dividing the prison of the white dragon emperor Albion. Your fated rival. Itsuki froze in her steps as she looked at her left hand. Huh? A rival? He nodded. Drag and Albion are rivals of legend. Every time their hosts like you appear, they are compelled to fight for supremacy, keeping the rivalry going. And Azazel told me that the girl is the descendant of the first Lucifer, meaning if you do not train hard, she will defeat and possibly kill you. Itsuki now did not feel so excited. Oh. Akino patted her back with sympathy. What can we do, Ramonis? Simply put, train. Who is to say they are evil? They might be a nice person. Ready to face your new lives? Both girls nodded firmly as he planned to turn these two into legends. Of course, weaker than him, so he would have to keep pushing himself to surpass even Draig and Albion. As he walked, he smiled. I will not allow myself to be weaker than my own peerage, sacred gears or not. After all, I am going to surpass a super devil and become a devil god. The Heavenly Demon Chapter 26 Marriage Counseling and Rare Materials Found the perfect character to represent Itsuki. In we from Dress Up Darling once Ramanus got his ambition into control, he of course first visited his mother who was not in her office today. Instead, she was spending her free time in a large room she converted to be her relaxation room. She had a TV, an enchanted bed to remove stress, and several fancy liqueurs to pass the time. His mother, despite her noble heritage, did not like to wallow in luxury, but he sometimes felt she was too selfless. He shook his head as they arrived at her relaxation room. When he knocked on the door, he did not have to wait long until his mother in a cozy pajama set open the door. She perked up when she saw him as these days it seemed he was the only one who paid attention to her. A part of her felt guilty that she even thought of using her son to remove her loneliness so she had given her husband a long chance. Even after the impotence curse, he still did not pay attention to her. Now all he was doing was working and leaving her alone just like always. If Sioticus did not step up, she might do something she could not take back. Venelana pulled back as now they were the same height. She was about to speak more to him, 
but when she saw Akino and Itsuki with him she was confused. And who are these girls? You are not one to kidnap people. Ramonas crossed his arms. I didn't kidnap anyone. Anyways, this is Akino Haimajima, a half-fallen angel who I turned into my bishop. And this is Itsuki Hayadu who I turned into my pawn. The Red Dragon Empress. Then Alana's mind went blank for several seconds as she looked at the small Itsuki. The girl waved her hand a little as then Alana's face went blank. Is she okay? Ramonis nodded. Give her a minute. Then Alana did need that minute as when she shook off the shock she needed to know. Where did you find these girls? They are not just found anywhere. Itsuki was from Kuo and had been living there this whole time. As for Akino, we were informed of her existence by a man in a contract with my father. I had to save her as she was being hunted by some Haimajima exorcists. Then Alana shook her head in shock. How did no one notice a Longinus user in Kuo this whole time? Ramonis just pointed at Itsuki who was staring up at Venalana with a smile. She is super weak right now? Took me four pawn pieces to turn her, but she has never had any supernatural encounters before. Except for meeting Odin. He takes time to go to Kuo to preach about breasts and give out nudie mags to people in the park. Venalana did not believe him at all. Are you seriously telling me Odin, King of the North? The chief god of the Norse pantheon goes to Japan just to preach about breasts and hand out pornos? You can see why I don't believe you. Itsuki frowned as it was all true. It's true. He is a little old man with a fancy monocle thing with a big white beard. He always has this cane and he will give the kids at the park those books. Then Alana covered her face with her hand as while Odin was known as a big pervert, he could not be that much of a pervert. Surely even he knew better than to give those to children. Okay, let's say I believe you. But why does he go to Kuo? Itsuki crossed her arms and shrugged. I don't know. He goes there every two weeks. The kids in the neighborhood find him funny, so we all go see him. We promise not to tell, though. Akino looked up at Ramonis. What's she talking about? Ramonis did not know if she was that sheltered or not, but he explained it. An old god who shows kids things he should not be. Odin, the god king of the Norse gods. Itsuki, please tell me when he shows up. The brown-haired girl thought about it before she remembered. Every second Wednesday of the month. He goes there for a few hours. Ramonas felt this was a great way to meet the king of the Norse gods. Once he got Valerie, he would need her to bring back either Kuchulin or Skathak. Preferably Skathak, and if all mythologies were real Celtic was as well. If he could find the skull of the Karuid which Gale Bog was made from he could create his legendary weapon. Alright then, I will be going with you to see what Odin has been up to. You're quite lucky that Odin is now an old man as in his youth he was much more violent. Itsuki started to sweat a little as she thanked her star's grandpa Odi was nice now. Regardless, Ramonis turned to his mother. Mom, I hate to spring this on you, but can you send a servant to speak to Itsuki's parents in Kuo? They let me take her with me for a two-week introduction to the supernatural world once they heard about the fate of sacred gear users. I also would like you to get some servants to set up some rooms for Akino and Itsuki. Then Alana smiled as she did not mind. It's fine. I was bored anyway. Let me list this first. Send a servant to Itsuki's parents, home, and set rooms up and food for Akino, I presume. He nodded. Yes. Thank you, mother. In the meantime, I need to speak to father. That killed Venalana's smile as her marriage was crumbling year by year. She should have said something centuries ago, but it was too late now. All right then, if you got time, Mark Hina wants to talk to you about the baby. Your father has kept it under wraps, but it is impossible now and some people are asking questions. Ramonis nodded. Got it. Be back soon. He started to walk toward his father's office as he needed better materials. Meanwhile, then Alana smiled as she hugged both girls tight as she loved cute girls. You two are so adorable. Come on, let's get you set up. You two can consider me a second mother. If you want, think of me as a friendly big sister. Akino and Itsuki looked at each other feeling that Ramonis' mother was a nice person. Meanwhile, Ramonis lightly stepped on the ground and with a quick use of Godspeed, he appeared in front of his father's office. Before he entered, he smiled as he loved the movement technique Godspeed as it was so versatile. He knocked on the door before speaking. Father, it's me Ramonis. Oh, come in. He reached down and opened the door to enter. When he walked in, his father had black bags under his eyes and his hair was disheveled. His beard was turning patchy and he seemed very irritated as he worked through the paperwork. Dad, something wrong? Zioticus mentally screamed at the world wanting to air out all his grievances, but he did not. No, nothing at all. I just have been overwhelmed with work. I see. Take it easy, father. I wish I could. 
Ziotica shook his head as he turned to face his secondborn. A source of great pride because he was quickly rising in power and in a short time he would reach the level of the original Satans. If not more because of his insane training drive, he was ever improving. Tell me, son, what do you need? Ramonis walked over to his father's desk and he pulled out of his spatial ring a paper. I need these materials. You have been denying my request for years and I think I have proven myself to deserve them. Here. Ramonis handed his father a paper where he listed a series of materials he wanted and in high concentrations. When Ziotikus picked up the paper he was instantly shocked at the concentration of metals and other materials. Son, this is too much. A ton of mithril already is a massive expense not to mention the 350 pounds of adamantium you want from the dwarves. A ton of dark steel, and worse of all you even want 500 grams of orsicalc asteriskim. Even in all my territory, we have one mine where even small quantities of orichalc asterisk M can be found and you want 250 grams of the stuff. That is not even talking about the other materials you want. Dragon's blood, dragon scales, and Minakawa feathers, all this even for the clan will be a great expense. What do you want all this for? Ramonis explained his idea. Simply put, I am planning to create a personal set of armor which I will be binding to my soul. Thanks to McGregor's tutoring and my training I have unlocked my soul's cape and with it new abilities. Once I create and bind this set of armor I will be able to grow it with me. It will always be at my side and will be a pillar I can rely on and evolve with me. I understand that this is a great expense, but the Grimry clan is not in dire straits and we have had thousands of years of successful business. Even this much will not dent the coffers of the clan. When have I ever failed or wasted anything? Ziotikus looked at the list as Ramonis was right. The Grimry clan was not one of the highest-ranking clans of the 32 pillars without reason. They had business in the human and underworld which brought in billions of human dollars and even more gold in the underworld. When Ziotikus looked at his son's determined face he sighed. All right, I will get your materials. The Minakawa feathers are going to take a while as I will have to speak to the Philippine supernatural community. Minakawa are creatures on the level of dragons and not to be trifled with. The other materials are much more doable as in the Grimry tray sure we have dragon blood and scales from metal dragons hunted long ago. I won't even have to buy the Orichalc Asterisk M as we have been collecting all we can for centuries. We even own a mine of mithril in our territory, just give me some time. Ramona smiled and nodded. Thank you, father. You won't regret this. Ziotikus smiled. Don't worry about it, son. Seeing the fatherly smile suddenly made Ramonis feel guilty on a profound level. He had made a big deal about respecting his brother's wife, Grafia, but he was planning to not do the same to his father. Damn it, what kind of hypocrite am I? I can't not try at least. Dad, I want to ask you something. Ziotikus was confused. What is it? You and mom are fighting, right? She told me you have been neglecting her for years and you look stressed. What happened? Ziotikus cleared his voice not willing to say the true reason he was stressed, but he did acknowledge the issue. Oh, yes. Markina has been in my harem for centuries, and I didn't think your mother would mind so much. I was wrong, and she is unrelenting in her fury. Ramonis decided to try to mend things between his parents before he did anything he would regret. Have you tried apologizing or finding the root of the issue? Ziotikus face turned bitter as he damn well knew what the issue was. He neglected his wife for too many years and his getting his mistress pregnant was the last straw. This curse she put on him was unrelenting, and she was much stronger than him, so he couldn't remove it himself. I haven't, but why should I? You understand me, don't you, son? We are devils. We collect harems to reproduce, so why is she so mad? Ramonis sighed. I know what you mean about the harem, but you choose to collect a giant harem. Even you can't manage that many women without neglecting them. When was the last time you even spoke to some of them? Or slept with them? Even mother is mad at you because you don't pay attention to her. No woman, devil or not will endure that kind of neglect forever. I know about your troubles because she told me when she did it. If you want to remove the curse, you better get back on her good side. Ziotikus covered his face in shame as his cursed fate was the result of his actions. Can't you talk to her? Ramonis pointed at his father. No, I am talking to you. You are the man, so man up and apologize. Or are you too prideful to do that, father? Because I am torn between you two. I love both of you as my parents but I am not blind to see who is at fault. You are, and mind me being disrespectful, but you need to change if you want mother to love you again. Ziotikus began to chuckle as he knew everything his son said was all truths. Was he ready to give up his pride and admit that he was wrong? I will need to think about it. What is there to think about, father? 
Do as you will, you're the lord of House Grimmery after all. Ramonis turned around and left his father's office. Once Theodicus was alone, he opened his drawer and pulled out an old picture. It was black and white and showed when he got married to Venelana in a grand ceremony. When he looked at his wife's beaming smile in this picture from centuries ago, he realized something. He had never seen his wife this happy since. His getting Markina pregnant was just the straw that broke the camel's back. I have asterisk ket up badly. What can I do to fix things? Chapter 27 Venelana's True Feelings Plus 16 If you are put off by mother son incest, this is not the chapter for you. Enjoy. Now that Ramonis was going to get the materials for his armor, and he even gave his parents a chance for reconciliation, he felt better. If in the end, they could not forgive each other, then he would have no moral dilemma about getting with Inalana. Oh well, it's up to him now. Now then, what did Markina want? Ramonis released his spiritual sense through the mansion as he began to search for the maid. Ever since her pregnancy got this far along, she had been relieved of her duties for the time to prevent harm to the child. She was currently staying in a large room where she would be giving birth. Ramonis once again used his movement technique and traveled through the mansion until he was in front of the room. He did not knock as he knew she was not doing anything right now. When he stepped inside, he saw Markina sitting in a chair while holding her growing belly. When she saw him, she smiled and stood up to give him a bow. Young master, I am happy you could come. Ramonis raised a hand to stop her from bowing. Don't bow right now, you are not in a state where you should be doing that. Markina nodded and sat back down. She stayed quiet for a few moments before she looked back up to him. Young master, I wanted to ask you to name my child. I know I have wronged Lady Vinalana, and even if she forgave me I feel guilty. Would you do me that honor, young master? Ramonis did not expect her to ask him to name her child. Why me? She stood up and walked over to him. She held her hand out for him, which he gave her. She placed his hand on her belly and smiled at him. While well, it was my fault this child came to be, you were the reason I wanted motherhood in the first place. When you and your sister were born, I always volunteered to be the one to look after you too. Eventually, I became your caretaker until you outgrew me. I don't mean to say this was your fault, of course. He smiled as he shook his head. I forgave you, and my mother forgave you. In that case, do not mind if I shall name my brother. I shall name him Asterian. Asterian Grimry. Markina smiled as that was a worthy name. I swear to ensure that your brother shall never challenge you for your position as heir. No one is more worthy to lead the clan than you. Ramonis pulled his hand away gently and nodded. Once he is born, and he grows a little I shall take him under my wing. If he has the clan trait or not. That was a subject of worry as if her child did not have the Grimry clan trait he would always be shunned among their society as a waste. A noble not born with their clan trait would always be looked down upon as weak. Even if he doesn't have it, he still has me as a brother. Ramonis did not delay much longer and he left Markina alone. When he was gone she sat down and placed a hand on her belly. Asterian, please be strong. You will need to be if you wish to measure up to your big siblings. Once he left her room Ramonis pulled up his phone. As he walked back to his mother's side he called up Azazel. He put his phone up to his ear and waited until he answered. Ramonis, how is she settling down? Well, Aquino has taken to the bishop piece well and my mother is making sure she eats and has a bath. Azazel stayed quite a few moments before he sighed. Oh well, it's for the best. Anyway, when are you going to start training her? Tomorrow. She needs at least a day to recover and then I will be putting her to the ringer like me. Oh, and what is the name of the white dragon empress? Azazel was less happy saying this, but he said it anyway. Viviana Lucifer. Why? Ramonis let his secret slip early. Because I got the red dragon empress on my peerage now. Both heavenly dragon hosts are now devils and female. Azazel went silent for a few seconds before he began to laugh. Ha 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 ha, for real? That is some luck, Ramonis. Want help training her up? No thanks, I got it handled. If anything I need help with Akino, not Itsuki. Though we can help each other train our little dragon empresses instead. When the time is right for them to fight, let's see who will win. Azazel asked the important question. A friendly fight, right? Of course, i rather not kill either of them as they have such long lives now. Instead of making them fight to the death better to just make them have a rivalry. Azazel felt that was a great idea. Thankfully you aren't a supremacist. I can work with you knowing you are more open-minded. I will text you Barakil's number so you can talk to him. As for Akino, I recommend having her circulate her holy lightning through her body to increase the concentration of holy energy in her blood. This will increase the power and purity of her fallen angel's side to offset her devil weakness. Though, 
Don't let her give her devil powers up either. Got it. Thanks, Azazel. Oh, and remember this well, Azazel. One year and six months from now, we are going to have to work together. Azazel smiled behind the phone as he swirled a shot of whiskey. That a future prediction? Yes. Take that as you will. Be seeing you. Ramonis ended the call after that and returned his phone to his spatial ring. As for Azazel hearing that made him smile as he downed his drink. He turned next to him on the couch where a small girl dressed in rock-style clothing was sitting with her arms crossed. You hear that, Viviana? She snorted as she turned around and rested her back against him. Yeah, I will win. Azazel was not so sure now because the short conversation he had with Ramonis made him feel a bit on edge. Ramonis was so young and already making him second guess a fight. He still would win in his mind, but he was not going to be worth it. You positive, kid? Viviana turned to regard him with a snort. Are you doubting me? Me. He raised his hands to calm her down. I am not. I am just saying that Ramonis is a powerful guy. With this Atsuki girl being in his peerage, she will be getting top-level training, and she is probably around your age. Viviana was about to disregard his words until the dragon-shaped jewel on her necklace began to glow. Albion's voice emerged to speak with her. Do not look down on the red one, partner. This girl will likely put you on your toes if her master is anything to go off. So, be careful. She reached down to grip the necklace with squinted eyes. Even the red dragon emperor will fall. Until I can murder my grandfather, nothing matters. Azazel sighed as this girl was still traumatized from her foul treatment at the hands of her own father. He luckily was not depraved enough to force himself on her, but he often would beat her severely just because she was born with the divine dividing. All instructed by his father rise of him Lucifer someone Ramonis was training to kill. Azazel just hoped that Viviana would not come to get hurt on this quest for revenge. He cared for her the same way he would a daughter. He reached his hand out and ruffled her hair a little. You will get him in time. Just be patient. She looked down with a small smile. I know. Thanks, Azazel. No problem. At least she had a good father figure after all she went through. She closed her eyes and let herself fall asleep near the man who was more of a father than anyone else in her life. After hanging up, Ramonis returned to his mother's side. By that point, she had already gotten several servants to start getting rooms ready for Itsuki and Akino. Just as he had said, they were given rooms directly in front of his. Ramonis watched as the servants with magic and numbers got those empty rooms ready to be livable. He turned to his mother who seemed to be happy not to be moping around. He turned to his mother and spoke to her telepathically. I talked to dad about your relationship. I think he wants to work on things now. She turned to regard him with squinted eyes. Somehow he could feel she was not happy. Pissed even. You didn't have to. But I did. I am not a kid mother. What we are becoming will change our relationship in a way that can never be undone. There will be no going back. She looked away from him a little sad and angry. Mostly angry. I don't want to go back, Ramonis. I felt you understood me more than he ever will. Is that so wrong, Ramamus? To want a man who appreciates you. And doesn't ignore you for years at a time. Even if he is your son. Because I know what I want, and it is not him. Even if he changes his act now, what will be the point? Just because he wants his cock to work again, he will change? Pathetic. For now long? A decade. Two three, four, or even a century. Eventually, things will return to normal as people do not change that fast. She looked down at the ground, and the last things he said made his heart clench. I just thought you knew me more than that, Ramonis. Guess I was wrong. She turned around to avoid looking at him, which made her feel awful. Meanwhile, the servants quickly got the rooms furnished and ready so the head butler gave a bow. Lady Venelana, young master Ramonis, the rooms are ready. Vinolin gave a fake smile as she often did to the older butler. Thank you, Jonathan. That is all we needed. Of course, my lady. Once the rooms were ready, the servants all now dismissed began to leave as they were not needed anymore. Vinolana's good mood was gone and Ramonis was the cause. Before he could fix this, he turned to face the two girls. Why don't you go and make yourselves at home? I need to talk to my mother alone. Vinolin did not turn around even when he said that. Though Akino looked up at his smiling face. Can we? He nodded as he smiled at the young girl. These rooms are all yours. Do as you like. Itsuki did not wait and rushed into her room to check it out. Akino did not take long to follow her example to see her room. That left Ramonis and Vinolana alone. She kept her arms crossed and did not turn to look back at him. She is pissed at me. Seeing his mother's state made him realize that she had already fallen out of love with Ziodicus long ago. Her marriage had been falling apart for centuries and now it was broken. 
The last straw was Marcina's pregnancy as it showed Zioticus did not respect her at all. Now, Ramona's coming along wanting to fix things only helped his father, not her. He tried to do the right thing, but it seemed nothing was the right thing. His father would be shamed for his wife to leave him and his mother would be left in a loveless marriage. F asterisk CK it. Once he made sure they were fully alone with no one to see them he walked over to his mother. He placed a firm hand on her back making her shiver. Huh. He then moved his arm below her knees and swept her off her feet into his large arms. Then Alana's purple eyes went wide as he did not delay and moved her into his room. He closed the door behind her and quickly pinned her against the door. He leaned in to look at her pretty face which was flushed with a smile. Since you were so direct with your feelings, let me be just as direct, mother. He leaned in and took her lips into a deep kiss. Once he kissed her she moved her arms around his neck and returned the kiss. She wrapped her legs around his back as she enjoyed the first action with him. The first action she had had in 12 years such a long time for her. Ramona stuck his tongue out and began to wrap it around her tongue. He played with her tongue and enjoyed the taste of her saliva. She was delicious. She gripped his hunter jacket tight before she pulled back with a smile. So forward. I am your mother Ramonis, you naughty boy. She rubbed her face against him and took in the feeling of being in his giant arms. Does your D asterisk CK even work at this age? He leaned into her ear and whispered into it. It does work, but who says I will be giving it to you now? Her legs squirmed at the neglect play. Why? She whined a little as she reached up and pulled down her blouse to expose her enormous breasts to him. She always went braless and he now could see them again. Don't tell me you don't want my body. Because it wants you. He shoved his face into her bosom and took one of her nipples into his mouth before sucking on it. She tossed her head back and rested it against the door as he ravaged her tits. A.H. So rough. Uh. He pulled away from her left breast before he dived in to suck the right nipple. He suckled, licked, and nibbled on it gently before pulling away. Because I feel like a child. Give me four years. She gripped him tight with her legs which had a grip so strong even he felt it. Four? You're going to leave my body in need for four years after turning on my switch? You're a devil, Ramonis. A real devil to leave your mother in pain. He smiled as he kept her lifted with a single hand. With his free hand, he dragged it up her smooth leg up to her lacy purple panties. Who said I will leave you in pain? You just won't be getting this cock yet. Her eyes began to glow much like his as she did not like the neglect play. You're a mean boy you know that. Fine. I will give you your four years, on the condition you play with me sometimes. I have needs that have gone unsatisfied for too long. Your father lost his chance with me long ago and when I divorce him keep this secret from him to spare his heart the shame. Deal. Deal. She smiled as she pushed him off her a little. Now let me see what I am working with. He put her down on the ground and watched as she went to her knees. He was glad that his room had long since been soundproof and warded against spying magic. He watched as Venelana undid his leather belt and unbuttoned his belt before pulling out his erect cock. When she got a look at it she was almost shocked, but he was a large guy. Seven inches already? You're going to be huge in four years, maybe I should wait. Before he could say anything she opened her mouth and took the head of his cock into her hot mouth. She first just gently sucked on it before she slowly began to rock her head back and forth. She tightened her suction and began to swirl her tongue all over it. He snarled as he dug his nails into his door as only one woman had ever sucked him this good before. His old neighbor and his mother's best friend. A 35-year-old black widow with the oral technique of a goddess. He got into her pants when he was 13 as his mother had left him with her while she went on a date. A bad idea as she took his virginity that day. He ignored those memories and focused on Venelana who took his cock into her throat. Being an ultimate class devil of considerable power she had perfect control over her body. Even her gag reflex so each time she moved her head up and down she took him to the base every single time. She squinted her eyes as he was still hanging in there. She pulled his cock out of her mouth before jacking him off a little with her hands. Have you done this before? He grinned. No, I am just that awesome. Is that so? She opened her mouth and coated it in power of destruction. Watch this. His eyes went wide as she once again took him to the base while wrapping his member in power of destruction. He grit his teeth hard as he could feel it gently wrapping around his cock in a firm, but warm grip. F asterisk CK. Who would think to use it like this? Two can play at that game. Suddenly Venelin's arms, legs, and body were wrapped up with threads of power of destruction. She squinted her eyes as he had good use of it. Despite being tied up, she went in for the kiss and sucked him off with all her experience with Zioticus, her only partner in her life. 
Romulus for all his experience with women could not resist, and he blew his load into his mother's mouth. She deactivated the power of destruction and merely enjoyed her son's semen. Once he stopped C asterisk Ming, she gave him a clean-up blow job, not leaving a drop. She pulled her head back and looked up at him with a smile. You came in your mother's mouth, you pervert. Want to do some more? Sure. He removed the threads binding her and gently pushed her to the bed. While they would not be having penetrative S asterisk X, this was hot enough for both of them. Chapter 28. Shame and six-month time frame. Turns out Satan class is still the best rank I can think of. I'm not happy with any other, so it's coming back. Ramonis and Venelana could barely keep their hands off each other for over an hour. She wanted more as she had been left wanting by her soon-to-be ex-husband that she had to rely on her son. Saying it like that did make her feel a little ashamed, but not enough to stop. And while she had more needs to be met, she understood Ramana's position. He still loved his father, and what he was doing with her felt wrong. Still, since she made it clear she was not planning on staying married, he seemed to respect that more. However, when they finally stopped messing around with each other, Venelana cuddled up with him fully naked. She wrapped her arm around his chest as she could not stop smiling. You certainly are dominating. These muscles are cut like stone. She looked up at his face and did not see him with a smile or content. She saw he was frowning and looked conflicted. She sighed as she sat up and pressed her breast against his chest to look him in the eye. What's wrong? You don't look happy. He brought a hand up and rubbed his forehead. I don't like having effectively cucked my father. I feel like an asshole more than you realize. Then Alana sighed as she wrapped her arms around him and gently kissed him. How do you think I felt? While a harem is not getting cucked, I had to go to bed knowing he was getting down with tens of women without me. I tried to join a few times, but I was always unwanted in those times. I couldn't do it in the intercourse I had with your father to give birth to you, and Rias was pure luck. After that, he once again started to ignore me. Would you rather me get with one of the butlers or servants? He wrapped his arms around her and shook his head. No. I guess keeping it in the family was for the best. She smiled as she rubbed her large breasts against his chest. Oh, it sure was. For years will be like such a long time, but I won't be married to your father for that time. Tomorrow, I will get the divorce started and I will return his ability to use his D asterisk CK. He can marry Markina if he wants a wife. Ramonis asked the important question. What will grandfather say? Then Alana sighed when she thought of her father who was the one who chose her husband. He will be disappointed in me, but I don't care. My mother will support me and your uncle and grandfather both support you. As long as we don't get frisky in public any time soon no one will know. Ramonis raised a hand and gently stroked his mother's face. Whatever makes you happy, mother. She smiled and held his hand. This does make me happy, more than you know. She stood up fully naked except for her white thigh-high stockings. She extended her hand and pulled her panties into her hand. She winked at him and placed one of her S asterisk XY legs on the bed. This way her vagina was visible to him as she slowly pulled her lacy purple thong back into place. When he looked back up to her face, he could see how she liked the way he looked at her. She licked her lips as she picked up her dress and pulled it on. She used a little magic to smooth it out and after she put on her high heels, she was once again dressed. She smiled as she looked at herself in his person-wide mirror. She moved her hands under her breasts and lifted them a few times. Do you find me S asterisk XY? He sat up from bed and with a wave of his hand dragged his hunter outfit back on. Once he was dressed with magic, he rid the room of the smell of S asterisk X and walked over to his mother. He wrapped his arms around her and rested his head on her shoulder. Right now they were the same height at 5 feet 8 inches, but she felt way smaller than him because of his sheer bulk. I do. You have no idea how hard it was for me to keep my hands off you. You know about Sarah Fall and Miria, right? Venelana nodded. A short stack and a milf, and now your mother. Don't forget I am not blind and know how you look at Rias. You want her, don't you? That obvious? No, you hit it well. Just know that inbreeding is normal even among the Bale clan. My mother Palestra Bale is your grandfather Demonita's niece. Since she was not born with the power of destruction, instead of being married off, she became his mistress. Don't tell anyone, but I think he loves her more than his wife. If he spends a night with his wife, he spends six with her. I can see why as my mom is a total hottie. Where do you think I got my looks? He tightened his hold over her and kissed her neck a little. Is my grandfather inbred? Vinalana nodded. Yes, your great-grandfather and great-grandmother are half-siblings. No one in the Bale clan will bat an eye at a little incest. Even if you got me pregnant. She reached behind and started to rub his crotch over his pants. Wouldn't you like that? To inseminate me with your baby. 
Lady, if that is what you want, then fine. She turned around and kissed him one last time. Don't leave me waiting. She winked at him and walked out of his room. By that time, Akino and Itsuki were long since asleep as today was just a day for them to get settled in. Once his mother was gone, he shook his head with a small smile. Damn, isn't she perfect? He held his hand out and dragged Blood Drinker to his side. Once he held his sword, he sat down on his bed and placed it on his lap. He closed his eyes as he began to channel his soul energy into his blade along with his Tuki and demonic energy. Before long, he once again found himself back in the core of Blood Drinker in Vespera's prison. When she noticed his presence, she looked up at him with a small smile. You have no idea how much your blood bats help. He looked up and noticed how the chains that kept her in pain were dormant. I got a question. You think if I remove your soul from this sword, will it break? I don't know. My soul has been the core of Blood Drinker for so long that I am not sure anything else can substitute it. It might break, but this is still Blood Mithril and Orichalc Asterisk M, so it's still a powerful sword. Thinking of freeing me early? Sadly, no. I am not confident at all to be able to keep your soul safe from removing it from this prison. But that is still the end goal because I got an idea for you. She raised an eyebrow as she leaned forward. Oh yeah, what is it? Interested in joining my peerage as a queen? You are a third generation devil and noble vampire hybrid with both species abilities I presume. Just from the power of your soul, I can feel that it is bordering on the Satan class. Vesper aside. Trust me, you do not want the political hot potato that is my soul. Zekram hated me enough to render me down into this sword and he is still alive, isn't he? Pick someone else. He just grinned as he asked her a few questions. Tell me, can you fight up close? Duh, vampires are built tough. He walked closer and asked the next. Your speed. Vesper grinned back showing off her fangs. Faster than light. He leaned in to look at her face directly. And, your magic abilities? She pulled herself and whispered it. Legendary. Then you can make use of the queen piece the best. I need someone who can use the bishop, rook, and knight traits not just one of them. But if you don't want to, I still got Tiamat to ask. Vespera went slack again as she waved him off. Probably for the best, instead of making me your queen piece, just make me your familiar when I come back. If I come back, that is. Ramonis nodded as he left the core of Blood Drinker. At his level of power, sleep was becoming a want, not a need. His body could subsist on his energy alone for long periods. For now, he pulled up his phone and looked at the time. 9.58. Not bad. He scrolled through his contacts and called Latia before bringing his phone up to his ear. He did not have to wait long until his fiancée picked up. She was currently in the bath, but since her phone was waterproof, she was fine. Ramonis, I am glad to hear from you. He smiled as he spoke to her. I am too. Every time I hear your voice, I get happy. I want to see you again. She smiled as her two maids in swimsuits cleaned her hair while she talked. I am free in three days. That sounds perfect. I wanted to tell you that my father has finally agreed to let me use higher quality materials. This brings me back to my original plan. I want to undergo the baptism on my birthday. You want it on your birthday? It's October right now, so in six months? That have any special meaning? Not really, I just felt it was the perfect amount of time to build the device and get things ready. Latia waved her hand to stop her two maids for a moment. They bowed and waited patiently for her to speak to him. I spoke to my uncle about your plan, and he feels that is beyond risky, but that the benefits will be substantial. If you want, we can get his help to build the device. That's perfect. All that matters is that I undergo the baptism because while my power is still growing day by day, I feel my body needs an evolution. If destroying it with liquid mana over and over will grant me a stronger body, then so be it. Can't you just keep training? The body will adapt naturally, and you won't have to feel any pain for it. He could understand that was logical but now that his soul was unique, his body had to follow. If it worked as he intended, his entire body would be destroyed, but as it healed, it would fuse liquid mana with his body, granting him a body to match his powerful soul and another trump card against the foes he would be facing. I need to do this. Just training will only make me so strong. This baptism will directly make my body league stronger than any other. Plus, I still will be able to continue my training with my new body, so there is no downside. She did say the one downside. Except for the massive pain. He chuckled. Exactly, but six months is a long time, and by then I will have steeled myself enough. Just trust me. Latia sighed as she nodded to her maids to continue her bath. As they did that she smiled. I think you were too smart for having such a muscular body. He did like being praised by her and the women in his life. Thank you. If you want to help me build my armor, I am all for the help. 
It won't be easy as I plan to bind it to my soul. I have reached the point of unlocking my own soulscape. The armor and gear I want to build won't be easy to make, but your help will be welcome. Consider me on board. When can we start the build? As soon as my father gets my materials. He will even get me some foreign materials for me which you will want to see. I can't wait. Oh, and before giving Sarah Fall a call, she wants to go on another date. He smiled as he was happy the girls were getting along. He gave their numbers to each other just to be open to them. Sarah Fall and Miria were already friends and Latia was friendly to them as she did give him permission to get a harem. All right, she has been busy these days. See you soon, Latia. Of course. Take care, Ramonas. Once they hung up, Ramonas decided to call Seraphal to see how they were doing. While he spent a lot of time with both of them, Seraphal got the short end of the stick by being a Satan. When she picked up, she was sitting in her chair while she rapidly moved through her work through her computer. However, when her phone rang with her favorite ring tone, she floated the phone to her ear. Romo, Latia told you. Yes, she did. You know you could have called me yourself, right, girl? She just stuck her tongue out. I could have, but I wanted you to call. The girl likes to be chased. I can see that you short stack. Hey, I'm the short stack. He chuckled as he asked her. In that case, want to go on a date in Tokyo? I am always free after all, but I got a date with Latia in three days and one with Miria next week on Friday. That sounds fun. We can check out all the anime stuff. I am free in five days. Bet then. See you then, babe. When he hung up, she got a naughty idea. When she got off the clock, she was going to be sending him some photos of herself. He deserved them after all since he had been nothing but a good boyfriend this whole time. Chapter 29 Raw Material and Past Recollections A bit of Ramanus backstory will be revealed in this chapter. Part of it slipped into the last chapter. Once Ramonis got off the call with Seraphal, he put his phone in his pocket and got up. Since Itsuki and Akino were sleeping already and his mother had already left, he was left with plenty of free time. This was the issue when sleep became unnecessary as you were left with plenty of free time. Suddenly, he remembered a material he would need for when he created his armor. He pulled his phone out again and called up McGregor. The mage as usual picked up instantly as Ramonis never called to waste time. Yes, this was why Ramonis liked his teacher. He never spoke in riddles and got to the point. Anything was fair game as long as it progressed his understanding of magic. I will be frank then, master. I wanted to ask about soul stones. What do you need to make more? McGregor leaned back in his chair as he asked the questions. I need living beings with souls, of course. I could make them from animals, but those are trash. Humans or sentient beings are better. Tell me, do you need human souls, devil souls, or something else? Ramonas thought about it as if they were going to be material to fuse soul energy into his gear. He had been thinking of adding human souls, but since his soul was neither devil nor human, he might need both. I will be needing both types. I am not even sure how many I will need. As for what I want them for, I plan to craft a legendary set of armor as my father is getting me my materials. But I wanted to add soul stones as materials to fuse soul energy to the mix. McGregor pondered on this for a while as he had been impressed with Ramanu's progress on souls. He already had some soul techniques which he was still working on. An advantage that Ramanu's Komion soul granted him. Let me guess, you plan to bind it to your soul. You are wondering if human souls or devil souls are the preferred material. I am master. While this may be total bullshit, I want to make sure of both to even out the type of soul energy fused into the gear. Devil and human if at all possible as this will be the first time this has been attempted. McGregor could barely keep a smile on his face. I have a working theory. Tell me if this is true. This gear you want to create, rather than making a sacred gear, you want a profane gear or whatever you will call it. Ramonis liked the sound of it. I like it. A profane gear. Will you help me? McGregor agreed. Kid. This is quality information. I will get you a deal. Get me around 100 criminals, and I will refine them into pure soul stones. As for devil souls, I already got a supply, so don't worry about them. Ramonis grinned. I will deliver. You pick them up, or do I drop them off? McGregor went back to his grimoire as the call went on. I will pick them up. Just collect them from a human prison, and take them to an isolated place. Send me the location, and then I will do the rest. All right then, see you soon. Once the call was finished, and he was dressed already, Ramonas created a teleport circle under his feet, and in a flash of light he was gone. Specifically, he appeared in the United States at the site of the only supermax prison in the country. It housed serial killers, drug lords, terrorists, and gang leaders essentially less than human garbage. 
Once he arrived at the location of the prison, he did not delay a second and instantly created a bounded field over the whole prison. The guards who were outside barely had time to react before the night sky became shimmering purple and red. They had even less time as Ramonis instantly clasped his hands together and caused every being in the prison to begin to pass out out unconscious. At his level of power, he could knock out the entire population of a city without fail. Unless one of the guards or inmates had magic or a sacred gear which he might as well check while he was here. That deals with the humans. Once the population of the prison was dealt with, he had free reign to pick out his materials. In the end, he chooses 100 inmates with severe crimes including serial killers, murders, gangsters, terrorists, and even a few drug dealers for the heck of it. Once he had his 100 inmates, he bound them in threads of pod to ensure they did not struggle even if they woke up. He waved his hand and piled them high in front of him and a nod. That takes care of them, now then. Ramonas closed his eyes as he held his hands together as he began to release another one of his soul techniques. By using soul energy along with his spiritual sense, he could see more than without it. The population of the Supermax was quite small, only 300 including the ones he was taking. However, none of the inmates or the guards had any sacred gears which was expected. They would not be kept locked up in a mundane prison that had no wards. No luck. He released his technique, bounded field included, and teleported away to the top of Mount Albert in Colorado. He looked behind him seeing that the 100 inmates were all still intact. Just when he pulled out his phone, he saw he had a few texts from Sarah Fall. What did she send me now? He checked them out and instantly he was smiling. She had sent him a few photos of her scantily dressed. Image here. Jackpot. He cleared his voice and exited out of the texts as there was a time and place for that. Damn, I love that woman. He instantly texted McGregor the location. Peak of Mount Albert, I got the 100. McGregor did not even bother to text back as he teleported to Ramana's location. When he appeared, he was still dressed in his fancy mage robe and seemed to be taking this easy. You were quick. I take you did not delay. Ramonis turned to face his teacher as this was the expected outcome. Of course not. I opened a bounded field to knock everyone out and I got to collect at my leisure. Why would I take the unneeded risk when this was so much easier? McGregor nodded as he looked at the mixed batch of inmates. Good work. What did you get me? Ramonis explained what he chose. A mix of serial killers, terrorists, murderers, gangsters, and psychopaths. McGregor walked over and poked one big tattooed guy with his leg. They will do. Shouldn't take me long to render them down since I already have the process to do it. You want pure souls or something? Ramonis thought about it. Yes, as pure as possible. Devil souls and human souls are quite different, and each piece of gear will need a few of each. Since a full set of armor has 14 different parts, one guess each one will need seven of each to work. McGregor rubbed his beardless chin. You're asking a lot of me these days, my student. What will you offer me? Ramonis rolled his eyes at this British mage. He knew this was just a farce as he was just curious, and a curious mage would do anything to sate it. Let you help me in the creation of the gear. I am getting my fiancée Latia to help me out, but someone like you would make things easier. You have no forging experience from my knowledge, but your experience in magic is legendary. I'd ask Ajuka, but you know that I much rather work with someone I trust. McGregor raised an eyebrow. You don't trust your uncle-in-law? Ramonis shook his head. Not really, he knows the harvester was used to kill Diodora and I'd rather not be involved with him much. I have no idea what he will do if he knows we did it, and even worse I have no clue what my brother will do. Will he choose me, his brother, or the friend he considers a brother? He has known me for eleven years, he has known Ajuka for nearly six hundred. Pretty easy to see who he should pick, no? McGregor shook his head with a sigh. Kid, don't be so cynical. I get your position but he is still your big brother. Sirzex will go to war for you and Rius against anyone. Did something happen for you to start doubting him? Ramonis opened his mouth to speak, but nothing came out. No, he hasn't. McGregor smiled. In that case, trust him. I haven't told him what we did, but maybe we should. Let's hold off on anything like that for a time, master. McGregor did not push the issue. Fine then, this is our crime, but your idea is so you should pick when it gets revealed. You also seem to be dealing with some shit but that is your can of worms to go through. I am just a mad mage who teaches you stuff I probably shouldn't be. Ramonis snorted. Hasn't it created me into a powerful being? McGregor gave him that. And you proved me wrong. I thought focusing on the path of the mage, fighter, and swordman was wrong, but you have not crumbled under the pressure. You have grown under it and become someone of renown. You already have a nickname in the noble circle, you know. 
If your mother won her youth and was called the flaxen-haired Madam of Ruin, you were being called the Knight of Ruin. Ramonas tilted his head. Why? I am more than just a knight. McGregor pointed at his side at Blood Drinker. You are the one always carrying a sword around, kid. The nickname is just sticking and even Rias has her nickname now that she is growing stronger. Not as fast as you did, but fast. Though she is just training under me and Suji as she has no interest in getting up close like you. Ramonas felt that was a shame. If you focused on just one of the paths to power, you would be defeated by an all-rounder. Well, that is her choice, I guess. I should check up on her training one of these days. McGregor felt that was a good idea, and before he forgot he remembered something. Hey, you interested in learning under an old friend of mine? Well, more of my old mentor, but he is a friend. Ramonas frowned. You have friends? McGregor snorted. More than you, that is for sure. He is a lich as in life he had been a power death mage who discarded his humanity. He mentored me when I was young and helped me start the Golden Dawn. When I told him about you, he was interested in mentoring you. So, want to learn under a lich? Ramonas had nothing against learning under one. Sure. What's his name? Dormuteth. Long ago, they called him the Abyss King. He is ancient, and on top of his death magic, he is skilled in more magic types than me. Including spurt magic as he was human during the time of the Persian Empire. Ramonas was impressed as that was over 2,000 years ago. And he mentored you why? Why didn't he just turn you into an undead slave? McGregor scoffed. You are cynical. Just because he is a lich doesn't mean he is evil or desires to have a world of undead. He just didn't want to die, and he saw potential within me. We at the Golden Dawn do not shame any magic except if it affects the order or gets too dark. Now that I think about it, I really should take you over to learn from my fellow mages one day. Ramonis nodded. It would be my honor. McGregor walked over to Ramonis and patted him on the shoulder. You're going to be taller than me any day now. I remember when you were barely at my knees and you were almost six feet at age eleven. I wonder what is causing it. Ramonas wondered if this was caused by his stronger soul because he had been six feet three inches in his past life. Maybe the fact that his human side had been older that was causing it. Thinking back to those days was tricky. He remembered all of it, but they were not all good memories. He had no father in his life as his mother got pregnant from a one-night stand in college. According to her words, it was a football player forcing her to drop out because her parents disowned her. Throughout his childhood, he always saw her with a new man to the house nearly every week. Some of them were worse than others, but one of the better memories was of his aunt. When she took his virginity, he felt it was a great day. That might have been why he was interested in older women, but then when his aunt told his mother instead of getting mad, she decided to give him a test run. When she found out how gifted he was at S asterisk X, she used him when she was left unsatisfied by her boyfriends. He shook his head thinking back to those times as they were a sore subject with him. I guess all my training. McGregor did not believe that was true as Surzex trained just as much as him, and he is only 5 feet 11 inches. Whatever you say, I will be going. Good luck, kid. McGregor waved his hand and weaved a giant teleport circle under the inmates. With a burst of light, he and the prisoners were gone. Now alone, Ramonas sat down on a rock as he thought back to his mother. Not Venelana, but his mother Carla. While she was not the best mother, she really was a good S asterisk ex friend, which probably was why he was so warped in the head. That made him wonder if he was already insane to begin with. Was that why the god of insanity chose me? Because I was insane. Maybe this whole second life is just a mad delusion? I seriously hope not. He shook his head and teleported back to his room. Tomorrow was not going to be a fun day for his father as divorce in devil terms was simple. She would challenge him to a fight, and she would be free to leave him if she won. It was almost funny as his father was only a high-class devil because of his noble heritage while Venelana was an ultimate-class devil. He stood no chance. It's not a delusion. Chapter 30 A Challenge in Heart to Heart When Ramonas returned to his room, he still had plenty of time to use up, so he walked over to his weight rack to get a few sets in. He discarded his upper clothes before he got his weight ready. A ton and a half seems good. Once he got the weights ready, he laid down and activated his gravity magic on himself. 20 times normal gravity seems good. Instantly the gravity around him became 20 times greater meaning he was now lifting 30 tons. Not to mention that he now weighed 3,600 pounds making this even harder. He grit his teeth as his tukey shimmers around him. It was still a light white but mixed in was a purple glow as his entire being was being transformed by his unique soul. Either way, this was the best way to train his control was to train with it as much as he could. Until he could perfectly circulate his life force at all times he would not cease. Until I can lift that planet, 
this won't end. For the hours of the night, Ramonis spent part of training his body and a small part in his magical studies. Thanks to all his abilities, sleep was slowly being turned into a want, not a need. He and Falbium were very different as he saw sleep as a waste of time while Falbium saw it as the greatest activity. He saw it as more time to be used to train and grow stronger. When the morning came, Venalana smiled to herself as she got out of bed. For years now, she had been sleeping in her own room, and today was the day she would cease to be Venalana Grimmery. Centuries ago, she could have fought her engagement, but she was doing it now. She walked over to her mirror and looked herself over. She asked herself what the hell was wrong with Zeoticus. She had been faithful to him for centuries, managed his harem, gathered the finest women for it, and all she got was being ignored. Now she was not the most prideful of people, but even then she knew she was hotter than any woman in his harem. If her son's reaction to her body was to go by, she was certainly not ugly. Was there just something wrong with him? Maybe he got off on feeling like he was cucking me? Is that it? Realizing that thinking about her failed marriage would not change anything she instead thought of how to dress for this day. While this was going to be a duel, Zeoticus was not her match at all. He had never been a powerful fighter as he was still only a high-class devil after all his centuries alive. Ramonis had been stronger than him at age six and Surzex had been stronger than him at birth. Honestly, the only thing he passed on to those boys was his clan trait and his hair in Surzex's case. In Ramonis, he looks more like my father than he does Zeoticus. Thinking of her younger son, she remembered the Victorian suit he sometimes wore. He called it the hunter's suit, right? She smiled as she removed her nightgown and tossed it onto the bed. From her body, dense demonic power began to surge all over her body like liquid. From her feet, a suit similar to Romanus's began to form. Rather quickly, she had formed a female version of her son's favorite outfit. She spun around checking herself out before touching her breast a bit. She still could not think of why Zeoticus ignored her so much. Ramonis certainly loved her breasts. Image here. Wonder what he will think? Now that she had time to think it over and what she did with her son last night, she still did not care. As long as he did not find an issue with it, she didn't either. Right then, let's get this over with. By this time, Ramonis was already up and about as he had not slept at all. Divorces in devil culture were beyond rare as it was usually a source of shame to be divorced. Instead of drawing out the process, the spouse who wanted a divorce would challenge their spouse to a duel. Being the challenger meant they were unhappy and would cause the challenged party shame in the case they lost. Even if they win the shame of their spouse, hating them enough to challenge them for a divorce would last centuries. Zeoticus and Venelana outwardly shared a loving marriage to the outside, but that was beyond true. Maybe that was the case long ago, but that certainly was not the case today. Ramona sighed as he got out of his walk and shower and bath. He evaporated the water on his skin with demonic energy and quickly got dressed in his hunter outfit. He drew Blood Drinker to his side and as usual strapped it to his side. When he walked out of his room, he ran into his mother who took this route on purpose. She smiled in his direction as she saw his eyes run through her body. So, what do you think? She spun around a bit before leaning forward to look him in the eyes. Her posture caused her breasts to push on her suit. It looks good on you, mother. Of course, nothing bears the original. She smiled at his joke and praise. Oh, of course, my lord, how could this lowly one think of surpassing you? Joking aside, I did wear it because I thought you might like it. I can see you do. Ramona sighed as he asked the question he wanted to ask. So, you off to challenge him to a duel? She nodded. I am. I already know I will win even if I am a bit rusty, and so is he. He hasn't fought in centuries and neither have I, but my edge is still there. While I do this, console Rias for me. She won't understand. Before anything else happened he needed to know. Was this my fault? She could see he was conflicted so she walked toward him and placed her hand on his chest to feel his heart. She could feel it slightly elevated as he did not want to be why his family broke apart. No, this was not your fault and never blame yourself for this. This was going to happen this century or maybe the next. You just gave me the courage I needed. I do wonder how long we will keep this secret. What will my father say when he realizes what we will become? What will Surzex think? She snorted. Let me handle Surzex. You handle Zeoticus. Just know he is still your father, so go easy on him. I will. Ramonis released his senses to make sure no servants were around. He lifted his mother's chin with his fingers. He leaned in and gave her a small kiss. She closed her eyes and enjoyed the kiss. Good luck then. She smiled and returned the kiss, but went deeper with her tongue to wrap it around his. She enjoyed the immoral nature of this relationship which seemed to turn her on because of her devil's side. 
Devils love to sin, and this was a terrible sin. She pulled back and winked at him. I love you. I love you too, mother. She let go of him and walked off with a bit of a hop in his step. As she did that he took in the gaze of her ass and the leather pants. She is perfect. Hotter, kinder, more caring than her. He shook his head thinking back to Carla. They were nothing alike, but he had no hatred for her. She just gave him some fetishes that were accepted by him being a devil. Thank you boss once again. He focused back on the situation and saw that Akino and Itsuki were still snoozing. He would need to wake them up soon, but first, he had something to do. He did not delay and teleported directly into Rhea's room. The burst of light from the teleportation woke her up instantly. She shot up in bed about and launched a giant almost lightning bolt of pot at him. He reached out and caught the attack with his gloved hand with ease. Rias was stuck staring as he dissipated her attack instantly. When Ramonas turned to look at Rias, he was almost shocked. She was naked and uncovered, but she did not look embarrassed to be seen like that. She didn't cover herself at all, but since she was eleven there was barely anything to see. Though due to her being a devil she was filling out faster than normal human girls. She rubbed her eyes a bit as wondered what he wanted. Brother, what is it? Ramanus's face palmed a little as he remembered that Rias in the anime never cared to undress in front of Issei or even Kiba. She even said she could only sleep if she was naked. He thought that was not going to happen, but it seemed it started when she went through puberty. Why are you naked? You always slept in a nightgown before this, so I thought you would be dressed. Rias reached down and began to pull on her clothes, starting with her panties. My body is hurting, and it's more comfy this way. You normally knock. What is it? Ramonis waved his hand and pulled a nightgown onto his sister's uncovered body. She was far too young to get his interest yet, and he was no pedophile. He knew what that did to a person one just had to look at him. Rias, sit down as I got news to tell you. She sat down on her bed as he sat next to her. He had to move his sword onto his lap first to get it out of the way. Once they were seated he reached out and wrapped an arm around her to pull her into a hug. She reached up with a hand to pat his arm a little confused. Brother, what happened? He looked down at her and hugged her tight. Mother just want to challenge father into a duel for the right to divorce him. Instantly Rhea's blue eyes became wide like saucers. What? She tried to struggle out of his hold, but she was far too weak to fight him in strength. He did not let her out of it as this was serious. Brother, we have to stop her. She can't, she just can't. She reached up and tried to pry his arm off of her. He did not let go. I know it's not ideal, but do you think mom is happy being married to father? Rias looked up to look at him with tears starting to stream down her eyes. She told me she was. She always said so. She said their love was beautiful. Rias, she was lying to you for your sake. She wanted you to find happiness instead of being married off like she was. Do you want to hear the full story? She nodded. Yes, I want to know. Simply put our father's harem. I know harems are normal for our people, but he went about it the wrong way. He neglected our mother for years at a time. The last time they were together was when you and I were conceived. Due to our low birth rates, they did not expect us, but we happened. Mom is nearly 1,000 years old and she has been married to father since she was 25. She has been venting to me about her marriage. For the first 100 to 200 years they had a happy marriage. Then father began to get his harem and he just kept growing it. She tried to manage it for him, but that was hard when there were over 200 women in it. Even for a devil keeping that many women without neglecting them is impossible. Mother is just the one who was forgotten. Rias clenched her hands in anger as she looked up at him. I didn't know. He smiled at her and laid down on the bed with Rias in his arms. She was 5 feet 3 inches right now, and in the anime, she got to be around 5 feet 8 inches his current height. Neither did I until she told me 5 months ago. Seems the pregnancy of Markina was the final straw for her. It was the one rule she had for his harem. She just told me to come tell you the news. He let go of Rias and saw her sit up in bed. She turned around to face him while wiping her tears. Are all men the same? Do they even love us? He opened his mouth to speak, but no words came out. He sat up and crossed his legs under him. He pointed at himself. Do you think I'm like father? Rias thought about it a bit before she looked at him with a distrustful look. You are getting a harem. I know about you with big sis Sarah Fall and that Miria lady. He saw her pout a little so he raised his hands to explain. Just so you know I asked Latia permission and my girlfriends all know about each other. I also go on dates with each one often since I started dating them. I don't neglect them like father does as he just has S asterisk X with them and nothing more. I don't want a harem of mistress as I want a big family of wives. 
Different Finn, and when was the last time father took mom out on a date? Rias was going to speak, but she realized she had nothing to say. Never. Big brother Serzax gives all his time to big sis Grafia. And I guess what you do is okay too. She crossed her arms and looked away from him. He smiled as he leaned forward to rest on his stomach to look at Rias. Are you jealous, little girl that you have no one? She stuck her tongue out at him. Who is jealous? I am not. He crawled forward and flipped around to rest his head on her lap as he looked up at her. Really? Because Riser is still open. Rias pulled on his cheeks hard. Jerk. All men suck. Riser included. He let her do as she wanted as this was not hurting. In that case, guess you will be single all your life. You will be like a human grandma with 100 cats then while I will have a big family with plenty of children. She looked down at him with a smile. That sounds nice. He nodded. Yeah. You know, if you don't find anyone, you can have me. Rias looked down at him as he was on her lap. Really? He nodded. I learned something from mom. Our great-grandparents are half-siblings of House Bale. And mother is the child of our grandfather and his niece. Rias reached down and began to stroke his hair. I guess that won't be too bad then. I already know everything about you so I don't mind. He smiled as he poked her on her nose. My heart will always be open to you, Rias. Just grow up a little, you little brat. You're barely taller than Sarah Fall and so immature. I can't think that you and Latia are the same age as she acts like a refined noble lady. She reached down and pulled on his cheeks again. Jerk. Don't compare me to Latia. As for Sarah Fall, I am getting taller and growing my boobs. She put all her points into her breaths. You can't pick and choose Rias. Watch me. He chuckled as he and Rias were always close. He decided to discard his thoughts of this world just being an anime world. It was real and he would live his life to the fullest to make up for his past one. He could gather a large family and more friends and reach the level of his boss. He wanted to repay Ravdal for this life he had been given. He was just glad that his family lasted together this long. He did wonder how it was going for his father. Zeoticus, when he woke up did not expect the day to change much. He took a shower without his maids for once as he still had this curse on him. He got dressed and left for his office where he spent most of his time these days. Just when he was about to get his work started, Venelana walked into his office. When she walked in he perked up as he thought that she had come to talk. Venelana, my love. I am glad you have come to see me. I have to say that outfit looks lovely on you. Did Ramonas inspire it? Venelana kept a cordial smile as she reached up and removed her wedding ring. She placed it on his desk and pushed it forward. He did, but that is not why I am here. I am here to challenge you to a duel for the right to divorce you. I am sorry. Zeoticus felt his entire world come crumbling down. A divorce after all the years they had gone through together. He stood up and reached out for her hand. What? What brought this about? I know I broke our agreement with the baby, but a divorce. Then Alana shook her head. That is just a part of the issue, Zeoticus. When we married, I felt we had a marriage to be envied. You gave me your love, and I gave you mine but when you brought your harem I thought it would stay small. Now, you have over 200 women to satisfy all your needs and your attention. Before we conceived Ramonis and Rias, we were intimate nine times in a century. That was not normal and I was loyal to you that whole time while you were off enjoying yourself. Marcina's pregnancy was just the final nail. Now Zeoticus, I Venelana Bale officially challenge you to a duel. We can fight here or in the arena. Your pick. Oh, and win or lose I will be returning your ability to use your cock in six months. Marry Markina or any of your ladies because I am through. Zeoticus looked down at his table before he stood up. He looked up both heartbroken and angry because this was his fault. He should have known this would happen he just thought it wouldn't. If that is what you want. He brought up his right hand where his wedding ring was placed. He activated the gem placed on it and teleported them down below the mansion to an ancient arena that was used long ago for gladiator battles. Once they arrived, Zeoticus looked across the field at his soon-to-be ex-wife. He could barely accept that fact, but he would fight with everything for even a chance to show how much he cared. Then Alana took a deep breath before her body a massive aura of power of destruction formed around her. Her hair began to float as she looked across at Zeoticus. I loved you, Zeoticus. You killed that love, now fight me. Zeoticus' face went rigid as he released his demonic power at all his power. He would show everything just to show he did not want their marriage to end. Sadly, it was over already. Chapter 31 Then Alana Bale once more and Bale scheme. I went back and changed the domain expansion as it did feel an original and out of left field. Chapters 14 and 15 were edited. Zeoticus knew he stood no chance, 
but he needed to show he was willing to change. However, to Venelana his willingness to change was just too late. He should have thought of that before forgetting her for a bunch of mates. Zeoticus' wings emerged from his back as he took to the sky. Around him, hundreds of magic circles opened showing his almost forgotten expertise in magic. His potent demonic power activated the circles as he launched giant searing blasts of fire, lightning, and lava at Venelana. She glanced up at the attacks coming at her and smiled sadly at him. I'm sorry. Before he knew what hit him, his entire sight was covered with an enormous orb of power of destruction. He watched as his magic attacks, which would have ended any other high-class devil, were not even a bother to her. He was hit by the full force of her attack, and only because she held back did he not die. She held her hand out and blasted him into the back wall. She released her attack and watched as he fell limp to the ground. Zeoticus was barely awake as his enchanted robes were nearly dust. Then Alana shook her head as she walked toward him. I hate to see you like this. It could have been avoided if you didn't forget about me. When she was standing over his limp form, she pulled out a vial of phoenix tears from her spatial ring. She opened it and dropped them onto his body, healing him from the damage she caused him. Zeotis forced himself up and looked up at his now ex-wife's eyes. They were filled with disappointment in him. He looked down at the ground and gripped it. I'm so sorry, Venelana. I don't know why this happened. I don't care what I must do. Give me another chance. I can be better. I will undo my harem. I don't need them. Venelana frowned and kneeled in front of him. She grabbed his face and stared into his eyes. This is why I am leaving you? You don't even know what you did wrong? What is the point of leaving your harem when they are all you care about? I am no longer Lady Grimmery, just Venelana Bale. The children will still be Grimmery, but my clan might try to pull Ramonis over to them. They do call him the Baleborn of the Grimmery for a reason. She helped Zeoticus to his feet and gave him a small hug. I did truly love you, Zeoticus, but that was centuries ago. Be happy. Zeoticus lowered his head and hugged her back. Will you ever give me a chance? She shook her head. Zeoticus, this is for the best. She released him and walked away from him. I hope you find happiness with Markina as your wife. She teleported away, leaving Zeoticus to his misery. The next three days were rough for Zeoticus as Venelana returned to House Bale and informed her family of her divorce. This spread to the rest of the noble circle along with the pregnancy of Markina. That revealed the existence of the not yet born Asterian, which started a whole set of discussions. Since the child was male and Ramonis was already the heir, it caused the noble circle to discuss who to engage the child with. This was considered the only worth a bastard had, especially since he was conceived by a rather weak lord like Zeoticus and a commoner, so not much hope was placed on the child. This caused a meeting to form among the 32 current clan lords because events like this were not common. In the three days leading up to the meeting, Ramonis began to teach Akino and Itsuki who were making great progress. He needed Itsuki to get a good grasp over her power because she was going to be important to his forging. Akino needed better use of her holy lightning because he fully planned to do what Azazel suggested to him. However, he had to stop on the third day to go on his date with Latia leaving them at home. At the same time, Zeoticus was seated at the massive circular table of the 32 lords of the pillars. Lord Bale was here. But he was not alone as his father Demonidas Bale was here along with Zekrim Bale and Venelana as well. She was still dressed in the hunter attire copied from Ramonis as it made her look more serious and imposing. Just in case, for the past three days since her divorce, she had returned to her old training to remove the rust if she needed it. At the same time, Graphia, Serzex, Falbium, Ajuka, and Seraphal were here as well as this was considered a big event that rarely happened. No one was speaking as Serzex had a frown on his face as his parents had split up. It came out of left field for him, and he hadn't even gotten a chance to speak to his mother to find out why. He sighed as Zekrom stood up to start the meeting. Zekrom looked to be a middle-aged man with dark black hair and peaceful violet eyes. If Serzex had to say so, Ramonis looked much like their ancestor. Only Ramonis' eyes were dark purple rather than violet. As for Zekrom, he and Ramonis both liked to dress sharply with the former being dressed in an ancient nobleman attire with a dark beard covering his face. He was also an imposing figure carrying a heavy aura for being a non-super devil. Welcome devil lords to a rare event in our society. A divorce among us is a rarity and along with it a new child of Zeoticus Grimmery is to be born. It is quite rare for a devil to sire so many children and three of your children came from your marriage to my descendant here. I heard events from Venelana herself of the reason for the divorce, but let us hear events from your side. Why did your marriage end? Zeoticus grit his teeth, but he kept his noble appearance for now. 
It was a long series of events started by my harem. Things were handled wrong resulting in the end of my marriage. That is all I will say. Murmurs began among the gathered lords as that was not a true explanation. Sir Zek stood up and came to his father's aid to keep his honor. Let us all give him his privacy. Relationships are complicated and stuff happens. Zekram looked across the table to gaze at Sir Zex with a calm look on his face. You are right. He deserves that much respect. On another note, let us discuss why we all gathered. The child. He is to be named Asterion, yes. Zeoticus nodded. Yes. My son Ramonus was the one to name him. The instant that his second-born son was named, more whispers and murmurs were started. Ramonus was an anomaly among their race because of his pure dedication to training. It was rare that a noble lowered themselves to training, but because of that Ramonus was the strongest devil of his generation by far. No other devil born around his age noble or not could compare to him. His true power was not truly understood, but rumors were stated near the original Satans. Zekram turned to Venelana who glanced up at her ancestor with a proud smile. He was her source of pride and her secret lover now. No one knew that second part, but Zekram looked away before speaking. I have not had the pleasure, but I hear he has made great use of his birthday gift. The demonic sword blood drinker killed all its previous wielders, and he has tamed the blade. You are blessed to have him as your heir. My blood runs strong in him. Zeoticus clenched his fists as this was what he was dreading. Already Clan Bale was plotting to bring Romanus over to their side. They did not consider him a grimmery, but a Bale because of his personality and appearance. Zeoticus spoke up to move attention somewhere else. The traits of House Grimmery and Bale do work together perfectly. It granted my son Serzek's power, and it is doing the same for my son Ramonus. When Demonides stood, everyone quieted down as he was the father of Venelana and Lord Bale. His might was legendary as during the Great War he slayed three cadre of heaven and the fallen angel of Gregory Esphers. He even wounded Raphael severely in a duel. Demonides looked to be about eighty with a long braided beard reaching his belly. He dressed just as sharply as his son Lord Bale and his ancestor Zekram. Despite his aged appearance, his back was straight as an arrow, and he was a towering figure. Six feet four inches and covered in dense muscles showing he was no long-range fighter. Zeoticus. No one is denying that House Grimmery's trait acts as an amplifier for the mighty power of destruction. However, Ramonus would not be nearly as powerful if he was not born of House Bale, and since you caused the divorce, I think you should compensate my daughter. When I engaged her to you, I thought you would treasure her, but that did not happen. Zeoticus turned to his former father-in-law who was in no way mad at Venelana. If anything, he saw her choice as the right one. You are no longer my father-in-law, but we were family, Demonidas. In your words, how should I offer compensation? Demonidas revealed his plot with a small smile. Since Rius was born of your union with Venelana, she should instead be the new heir. This child, Asterion, can be a replacement for your and Venelana's marriage. However, as he is a bastard of commoner blood, the best we can offer is a member of the branch family. As for Ramonus, I say you should return him to his family. His true family, House Bale. Sir Zex was about to rise to his feet, but Grafia reached out and held his hand. Ajuka grabbed his arm as he could not act the way he wanted. Sir Zex grit his teeth and waited for his father to speak. You are asking me to give up my heir. For eleven years I have mentored him to take over House Grimmery and his name is Ramonus Grimmery because Venelana was married to me during his birth. I would have to disown him from House Grimmery and that is a shame I won't place on him. Demonidas smiled behind his beard. But when he introduces himself, he calls himself Ramonus B. Grimmery. He did not have to do this, but he chose Bale as his middle name to show his care for his family. Magdaran is the current heir, but he has no interest in the title. As for my other grandson, Serorg, he was born with no demonic power or power of destruction. From what I heard, he is quite a formidable brawler, but neither of them are good fit for the next Lord Bale. Ramonus fits all the criteria. Instead of reigning over the Grimly clan, which is ranked Duke, he will rule House Bale as a great king. Wouldn't that be the best future for him? Think of what is best for Ramonus and Devilkind in general. Ziotic is sent a pleading gaze at Venelana who decided to speak up. Father? Wouldn't it be better to speak to Ramonus himself? What will also happen to his engagement with Latia Astaroth? Demonidas nodded as this was true. His daughter had the right to choose because of her power. He engaged her to Zeoticus because her mother persuaded him to choose a good groom for her. Their engagement, of course, will remain intact. I would not break them up, but since this was started when he is still the heir house, Grimmery and Astaroth shall remain binded. I won't remove a long-thought-out agreement. 
Sarah Fall cleared her voice and brought attention to herself. I normally wouldn't be exposing my business like this, but Ramonis and I are close. Intimate even as despite his young age, he is mature beyond his years. What will that mean for our relationship if he is to become the next Lord Bale if he agrees at all? Instantly all eyes were on Sarah Fall as they remembered that Ramonis was eleven. Some had never seen what he looked like and imagined him to look like a small boy. They were giving Sarah Fall weird looks which she ignored. Sir Zex did not really expect Ramonis to actually follow through. He smiled at his little brother because he was that good. Yes, I won't be the only married Satan now. One down, two to go. Who should I set up a joker with? The green-haired Satan shivered as he didn't want marriage. As for Sarah Fall and Ramonis, he was more mature than she was by far. Though Roygun Belfagor, Lord of House Belfagor blushed and touched her face. Oh my, she also likes younger men. I wonder if I should see this Ramonis. Demonetus knew about her relationship already as she did nothing to hide it. Yes. I heard you and my grandson have been seen going on dates in the capital. If you marry him, will you give up your title as Leviathan and take the name Bale? Sarah Fall shook her head. I don't need to Demonetus. I already gave up my name as Citri to become Leviathan. If I marry Ramonis, we keep our names as they are. However, the decision is up to him and not anyone else. Zekram placed a hand on Demonetus' shoulder. Demonetus nodded and sat back down. Now that he was talking again, Zekram agreed with that. Of course, where is he at the moment? We need to hear the answer from his mouth. Zeoticus? Zurub? Any of you know? Zurub was the name of the current lord of Stayorth, which very few would call a lord on a first-name basis. Zekram was one of those. Zurub, though, knew better than to call him out as Zekram was effectively a king of their race. He went on a date with Latia, his fiancée. Zekram hummed. Where? Zurub as he tried to remember. Kruger National Park in South Africa. Latia and Ramonis wanted to do something special so they went over to Sightsee. Zekram felt that was a nice idea. I would hate to interrupt them, but this is important. I will send a servant to call them to this meeting. This is a serious matter after all. Roy Gunn spoke up. No need to send a servant. I am more than happy to go. Zekram raised an eyebrow. You? Why? Roy Gunn just smiled as she rested her chin on her hands. Since this is such an important thing, I think it best for a lord to go. No? Get someone trusted to deliver. Sarah Fall frowned as she knew what Roy Gunn was planning. Hey, hands off. He is taken. Roy Gunn glanced at Sarah Fall and smiled. Why can you keep the boy to yourself? I hear he has a thing for women older than him and I qualify, don't I? I also like young men younger than me so we are a match right. He won't be up to your tastes, he is too grown for you. How grown can an 11-year-old be? He is still ripe, uneaten fruit after all. Sarah Fall smirked as Ramonis was no little boy. All right then, go see him then. I bet you will lose all interest the moment you see him. Roy Gunn smirked. Now I want to see him more. Zekram cleared his voice as he could see something going on between the two devil ladies. Women were quite a tricky thing among devils especially when they were strong. If you want to go, then be my guest. We have more to discuss after all. Roy Gunn stood up and teleported away to South Africa to get Ramonis and Latia as well though she was more interested in seeing him for herself. What she was picturing was very different from the real Ramonis after all. Chapter 32, Karn the Honey Badger and Ramonis Choice Here is a long chapter. As Xander had said, when he and Latia had met up early in the morning, they had both begun to suggest different locations to go to. They had the underworld and the human world, so locations for sightseeing were nearly infinite. In the end, though, they both decided to just spend some time in South Africa at Kruger National Park. They had foregone the guides as they were more than capable of taking care of themselves as mundane animals were harmless. Since they had arrived, they had been traveling through the park coming close to each animal. Currently, Latia was on the back of a big white rhino with Ramonis walking by the animal's side. The big bull did not seem to mind them riding on his back as Ramonis had bribed him with some bale apples. The bale apples were a highly sought-after fruit grown in the bale territory. Each one looked like a regular apple except that they had purple skin and grew with magic meaning each one contained mana inside. Latia watched as Ramonis pulled another apple for the rhino which seemed to be delighted at the snacks. It opened its mouth and took the apple from his hand to begin eating. Is that a good idea? Bale apples have mana inside of them and this is a regular animal. Ramonis scratched the big creature on the back. It's fine. If this big guy gets smarter or stronger, it will serve the species more in the long run. How are you enjoying the ride, my lady? I also love your outfit. Latia loved to dress expensive, 
but he had suggested she try out his Bloodborne Hunter suit. Just as he expected, she pulled it off really well. She smiled as they were dressed in a similar style. We should get some professionally made. These are just made of demonic energy as you keep calling it rather than real leather. Might be more durable. He had been wanting to do something like that, but he had one issue. I would like to, but I would need to keep getting it sized up. It seems I am growing two inches and a half every six months. Latia understood the reason. That is because you are a bale. The men of House Bale are all extremely tall. I can see why everyone in the noble circle who knows you calls you the bale born of the Grimry. Rias and Serzex are both Grimry without a doubt, but people don't think so about you. He knew that all this time. I know. Despite the Grimry crimson hair being a dominant trait, my bale genes run strong. It is what gives me my proud temperament. She quite liked his temperament as he was proud, not arrogant. With how much he trained, he had the right to be proud. However, Latia did not expect what was about to cross their path. As Ramonis continued to walk by Rhino, his favorite animal crossed their path. From the tall grass, a small black and white creature emerged. Latia squinted her eyes at the sight as it was already starting to hiss at them. The rhino she was riding backed away a little as no creature wanted to lose their nuts and this animal went for the nuts. Isn't that a dash? Honey badger. Suddenly Ramonis ran forward and leaped forward landing on the weasel. He gripped its nape and picked up the thrashing and hissing honey badger. He turned to Latia and picked up his ill-gotten prisoner. Look, it's honey badger, my favorite animal. His face looked really happy, but just as Latia was going to check it out her nose began to pick up on a foul odor. She recoiled as thanks to being a devil her senses were much more sensitive than a human's. She started to retch and covered her mouth. Ramamus coughed at the odor because, like their relative the skunk, honey badgers could spray too. Ramonis waved his hand to collect and incinerate the foul odor. He walked back to Latia and the rhino while holding up the thrashing weasel. Latia was curious about honey badgers now. You are holding him quite tight? Is he okay? He nodded. Oh, he is fine. Honey badgers have really loose thick skin. It's thicker than buffalo skin and they can take serious wounds without a care. They can turn around and bite their foes and these claws are no joke. No animal unless desperate tries to find trouble with these crazy things. Latia could already see the gears turning in his head. You want to keep him? He made the dumbest face he could as he looked up at her. Can I? Pretty please, babe. She rolled her eyes at him before quickly snapping a picture of him. Keeping that one for the photo album and do whatever you want. No one is going to care. He chuckled as he looked at the badger who looked ready to tear his face off. Sweet. Now what a name you. He thought about it for a few seconds before he had one. Karn, that is your name. Ramonis was going to keep him as his pet and see if he couldn't strengthen him with magic. This is a fun day. Just as Latia and Ramonis were having a good time, Roy Gunn arrived at the park. She just appeared at the random location which just so happened to be surrounded by a pride of lions. She looked around her and merely waved a smile. Pardon the intrusion, kitties. I will get out of your hair. She flew into the sky and since she was currently using her king piece she was brimming with power. She closed her eyes and spread her senses throughout the park searching for a signature of demonic power. That was easy as Ramonis might as well have been a son in her senses. She whistled as Ramonis was league stronger than her without the use of the king piece. Without it, she was only a high-class devil, but with it, she could fight at the Satan rank. She did wonder what would happen if someone like Ramonis got a hold of a king piece. She shuddered to imagine it because he was nearing the Satan rank on his efforts alone. She was already excited to see what this Ramonis looked like. When she teleported to his and Latia's location, what he saw was not what she was expecting. Ramonis, with a bit of demonic energy, had calmed down Karn enough and even managed to form a familiar contract with him. After promises of food, power, and more foes to fight, the badger truly chilled out. He crawled up Ramonis' shoulder, but he hissed at Latia when she tried to pet him. Latia pulled her hand back with a frown. I don't like him. He is adorable, don't you think? He was talking to the rhino who snorted at him. He pulled out another bale apple and fed it to him without any hesitation. Already he was seeing his mana was beginning to circulate through the rhino. He placed a hand on his side and placed a tracker as he wanted to see what he would become. Just as he did that he and Latia gazed in front of them at the teleport circle forming. From his studies, Ramonis recognized it as the circle of House Belfiger. Who could it be? When the circle activated, Roy Gunn appeared in its place. She instantly looked at Ramonis with a smile that shrunk a little. She looked him up and down and the first she noticed was his size. He was overflowing with muscles and he was tall. 
His face, while youthful, was very mature and quite handsome. Oh my! Seraphal Leviathan, why have you kept this king to yourself? Are you Ramonus? He nodded with crossed arms. I am. I don't think we have met before, Lady Roygon. Latia glanced over at the horned pink haired woman. The second place champion of raiding games? Is there something we can help you with? Also, how did you know where we were? Roygon smiled as she looked at Latia. She looked a bit more like her age as she was a girl and did not train her body nearly as much as Ramonis. Regardless, she was already starting to become a beautiful young lady. I didn't mean to interrupt your date, but this is important. Are you aware that the divorce of Ziodicus and Venalana has the noble circle in a spat? They want Ramonis and you as well to present yourselves. Ramonis glanced over at Latia and helped her dismount from the rhino. Before he let the animal, he pulled out another apple and handed it over. Here, for the troubles? Rhino licked his face before taking the apple and walking off. Roigun now turned to the big and very angry Karn. He hissed at her and lunged to bite her. She smiled as she released a bit of her aura intending to intimidate him. A bad idea as honey badgers don't care about anything. It snarled at her even more which left her speechless. Is he broken? Ramonis shook his head with a smirk. No, he is just a honey badger. They fear nothing. This is. Karn. Now then, let's be off. Roiga nodded as she looked over at Ramonis. Let's. When this boring meeting is over, I will let you get back to your date. Roigun didn't need to, but she walked over and grabbed his arm. He glanced down at her as she was a bit shorter than he was, though her horns did give her a bit of height. You're forward, Lady Roigun. She leaned forward a bit and hugged his arm tighter. Oh, should I let go? He squinted his eyes before smirking at her. No, I like the attention of a gorgeous woman like you. And I'd like a handsome man like you. Why not me? Latia was not one to get jealous, but she did clear her voice. Lady Roygun, that is my fiancé you were flirting with. If you want to join his harem, you need to pass the criteria. Roygun smiled at Latia. Oh, and what is it? Latia was about to list them off but she stopped. Oh wait, she passes every single one. Beautiful, powerful, talented, a mature body, and she is friendly. Never mind, you pass, but do remember despite his dashing good looks he is still eleven. Roy Gunn did not want to believe this hunk of a man was eleven years old and simply hugged his arm tighter. I want to believe you, but fine. Want to exchange numbers after the meeting? He of course would give her his number. She was cheating a bit because of the king piece, but whatever. She could become strong without it as she uses her clan trait crack on Typhon, a member of the top 10 world's strongest. Of course, but let's not delay. Roiga nodded and teleported the four of them Karn included back to the meeting room. When they arrived, Seraphal squinted her eyes when she saw Roigun holding her boyfriend's arm. Roigun looked over at her and smiled at her. He likes me, Seraphal. Latia said I passed his criteria. Seraphal sighed as she knew that would have been the case. Whatever. You do need a husband anyway. If Latia is fine with it, so am I. I just got to inform Miria his other girlfriend. Please do. I might as well meet you all. This whole conversation happened in moments, so Roy Gunn let go of his arm and stepped back. Ramonis B. Grimory and Latia Astaroth are here now. Instantly all attention was placed on the two of them as Ramonis and Latia had been engaged at his party. The Ziodicus and Venalana had invited all of the pillars, but not all had been able to go. Sometimes Ramon has skipped or never tried to stand out so this was the first time a few were seeing him. They had to say they knew what Zekrim meant when his blood ran strong in him. Despite his father being a grimery, he did not get their crimson hair or blue eyes. His eyes were a deep dark purple and his hair was pitch black. Not to mention with Zekrim, Demonetus, and Lord Bale he looked like he fit in among them. Then Alana though gave him a wave which he returned with a smile. Seeing how he was here, Zekrim stood up once more. I am glad you could make it, Ramonis. I am sorry we had to interrupt your time with your lovely fiancé. Ramonis dismissed it. It is quite all right. Though, it is an honor to meet you, ancestor. Zekrim smiled. The feeling is mutual. I see my gift has been treating you well. Ramonis placed a hand on the handle of Blood Drinker as through the link he shared with Vespera he felt her terror. She was deeply afraid of Zekrim, and he would too if he had been forced to endure what she had. Relax, I am here for you. Her voice barely a whisper entered his mind and it hurt him. Don't let him take me again. I promise I won't. While he consoled Vespera he spoke to Zekrim. Yes, the sword is magnificent. Cuts through flesh like butter and is immune to the power of destruction. That was why I sent it your way. I won't delay. Come and sit with us. We have much to discuss. 
Ajuka sent a look down at Latia. You can sit with me. She nodded at her uncle before looking in Ramamis' direction. Before he started to walk, Ziodicus spoke up first. Zikram, with all due respect, he is my heir and son. As the next Lord Gremory, he should sit with me at this meeting. Zikram smiled in his direction. Ziodicus, the boy is going to sit with his mother. Nothing wrong with that. Ramonis sent a look at his father before walking to sit next to his mother. She smiled in his direction before she reached out and held his hand. Ziodicus sighed as he knew his son was closer to his wife than him. She looked at Karn who seemed itching for a fight. Is that a honey badger? Ramonis nodded. Yes, I decided to take him along with me. Demonetus looked at Karn who hissed in his direction. Mean little shits, ain't they? Ramonis held his right hand out and shook his grandfather's hand. They certainly are. That is exactly why I'd choose one as a pet. Demonetus looked forward after that. Make sure you train it properly. The difference in how Demonetus treated Ramonis from Rius and Serzex was that they were always associated with House Grimmery. Their crimson hair was a constant reminder they were Grimmerious. As for Ramonis, his appearance was perfectly bale. Though he was better than his uncle who outright hated Serzex. He saw Rius as nothing but a spoiled rich girl as he had not heard of how hard she had been training for the past five months under Ramonis. His uncle was more accepting of Ramonis because of how much he seemed to be one of House Bale. Black hair, purple eyes, power of destruction, proud temperament, and potent demonic power. Everything one needed to rule House Bale. Zikram cleared his voice as Roigun sat down. Now that Ramonis himself is here, we will continue with the delegation. Ramonis, you were born from the now-broken marriage of Venelana Bale and Ziodicus Grimmery. With the divorce happening, you are now in a unique position. I, progenitor of House Bale, ask if you would become the next heir of House Bale following the end of your uncle Aslan's end of term. Ramonis certainly did not expect to ever be considered for the position. He knew that Sarorg would be soon coming to challenge Magdragon for the title, but he would get in the way if that happened. Ramonis glanced over at his mother who gripped his hand a bit. This is your choice. His grandfather Demonetus also agreed. Think about this carefully, Ramonis. An opportunity like this comes once. Rule House Grimmery as Duke, or Rule House Bale as a great king. Even his uncle said something to him. My term as Lord Bale will end with the end of this century. Until then you can mentor under me. I will teach you the ropes of being a proper Lord of House Bale. Zikram had no fancy words and merely waited for his answer. Ramonis looked at his brother Serzex first. Brother, I think I should take this offer. With you as Lucifer, I will be able to make more progress for devils. We both can together. Sir Zex thought it out and felt that would be a good idea. If you choose this, it could be what we need to get out of this stagnation. However, if you step down as heir, will Rius be the next heir? Most likely. I do not think Asterion will be considered because of his commoner blood. And she is getting stronger from all the training I am putting her through. Not as fast as me, but she will be ultimate class by the time she is 14 by my estimations. More than enough to defeat Riser, she hasn't even talked to him since. Serzex nodded with a chuckle. If you do choose to do this, I will support you. Seraphal and Ajuka will support you as well. Maybe we can end the split factions of Great King and Satan, but what about Father? Mother left him, and he will feel you left him as well. Mother did what she had to do. He is still my father, so I will talk to him. On another note, thank you brother for supporting me. Serzex smiled at him with a proud look. Hey. You got Seraphal to fall in love with you. You did what I told you so do what you think is right. Then Alana let go of his hand as Ramamus stood up and boosted his voice with a bit of demonic energy. I will accept the offer to become the next heir. Ziodicus felt his world come tumbling down. For the first eleven years of his twins' lives, he felt he was ruling the world, but five months ago everything changed. Just impregnating Markina had caused so much chaos. His wife cursed him to not be able to have S asterisk X. She then divorced him, and now his son had been drawn to House Bale. Everything is going wrong. Ramonis glanced at his father and communicated with him. Dad, this is for the best. Not just for me, but for devils as a species. I can make more changes along with Serzex. Make Rius the next heir, and in a few years you will see this was the right choice. Ziodicus looked at his son barely holding it together. I understand. No matter what you are still my father. I won't be cutting contact, and I will help Rius out once she becomes the next lord. Just keep a head up. I can't wait to see the wedding with you and Markina. You think I should marry her? You don't have a lot of options. He cut communication as Zikram addressed all devils. I, Zikram Bale, progenitor of House Bale, nominate Ramonis G. Bale, the next heir of House Bale. 
In six months there shall be a celebration at House Bale and all clans are invited. Since Latia Astaroth is joining House Grimmery and House Estayorth together, you need another engagement for your new position. Ramonas had some things to say. My standards are quite high, and no regular noble lady will suffice. If she meets my criteria, then fine. Zikram through spies knew about his relationships except with Venalana. His relationship with Rias was still budding as well, and he just met Roy Gunn as well. Lady Leviathan, an ultimate class devil of an extinct house, and the niece of a Satan. Very high standards, but I am sure we can match them. Is there anything else anyone wants to bring up? No one said a word, so the meeting was dismissed. Zikram turned to Ramonas personally. When do you think will you be moving to the main bail castle? By the end of the month. And I have to say that I might not be available on my twelfth birthday. I have plans that day, but we can talk about them later. Zikram nodded. We will talk more once you move. One by one the many lords began to teleport in mass. Demonides patted his back firmly before he also left. His uncle didn't say anything and left as well leaving him in Venalana. I respect your choice, son. I told my mom about us. He did not know how to take that. And how did she take it? She didn't mind and said I was a naughty girl. As for my father, he just said he didn't want to know what we do. I had to remind him of the fact his parents are half-siblings which shut him up. You have to tell me that story. Ziotic is seeing how Venalana and Ramonas got along was thinking something very different from the truth. I should have spent more time with them. He teleported home to see Markina who might be the last person who could comfort him now. Venalana now looked at her oldest son Serzex who was looking a bit confused. You go on. I need to talk to him. Ramonas nodded as Roygon and Sarah Fall walked over to him. Latia also came over as they wanted to talk about a few more things. Roygon was a new addition, but he was just going to get her number so nothing was set in stone. Though, he did have to say he liked the pink hair.